Greetings programmers, Busted Thumbs here for our brand new series where we're going to take on a competition this time. We're going to make another game and we are going to make it together with my great daughter and friend Fluffy Wishes who's here. Hello! Uh, we're, going to, we're going to this time do another walk me through it. I'm going to, I'm going to make this game with Fluffy Wishes right in front of you. Uh, but this time instead of having just some idea of what kind of game we want to we want to build for you to play or for you to try on your own we're going to use one of the ones that's been written as a competition for scratch uh, at an earlier time and what I what you're looking at on the screen right now is the competition for the Washington State Middle School Computer Science uh, computing for all effort they did this in May of 2015 and this was there was uh, a bunch of middle school students got together and they had individual tests that they could do but there's also a team challenge so Fluffy here is going to take you through the rules of this competition and then we're going to jump into a series of videos where we put this uh, where we put this together we break these videos into about 15 to 20 minute chunks so you can watch it at your own pace and maybe in between each one you can try along yourself and maybe even make modifications and see what you think but let's just jump into this right now so we first we need to understand what the competition is and we do that just by scrolling down into the rules take it away alright <clears throat> please read these directions carefully before beginning breaking any of the rules is grounds for disqualification there's no way for us to get disqualified but that's okay let's find out what the rules were do not turn this page and begin working the test until the start of the test is announced. Once the time starts, you will have 60 minutes to complete this test. You are only allowed to consult with your teammates during the competition. No talking to anyone else, including coaches, is permitted. No devices of any kind, calculators, phones, etc., besides computers, are allowed during the test. You are not permitted to have any internet browser windows open during the test. Items with a negative point value next to them are required. If they are not in your game, those will be subtracted from your overall score. Items with a positive point value are bonuses. Choose which ones you want to include in your game. Partial credit can be awarded if you include an item that is not fully functional. Bonus points will be awarded for game design and special effects. All right, so this uh, competition was slated for 90 minutes, and they say you have 60 to put it together. We're doing it on, on our own, not with the, with the team, and I'm going to be talking the whole time, so I'm not going to worry too much about the the time that it needs to be completed in the 60 minutes. Instead, I'm going to worry a little bit more about uh, doing it right and making a game that works properly, so that you can learn something about Scratch as we go along. So let's find out what this game is about, and we see down here. <laughs> in the requirements page. The object of the game is for the user to safely maneuver the frog to the top of the screen within the time allotted by first avoiding cards and then jumping from log to log. Cars and logs appear on one side of the screen, move slowly across the screen, then disappear when they reach the other side of the screen. Sprites do not need to look the same as in the example, but they must have the required names. Okay, so we have three required sprites and the names are? Frog, cars, logs and there are two required variables which are lives time and the required visuals two checkpoint platforms at that's least the purple lines at least two rows of cards moving in opposite directions at least two rows of logs moving in opposite directions and a landing platform all right so for those of you who are not familiar with this game this is one that was around in my childhood and what you're looking at is a screen of Frogger, one of the original versions of Frogger. And that little frog that's down here at the bottom there, he has to get across the road by not touching any of the cards. He can hop up and down and left and right, uh, but he can't touch any of the cars. And once he gets to this next purple zone here, this is a river he has to get across. And now instead of not being able to touch any of the cars, he has to land on top of the, the, the turtles and the logs that are here. It sounds like in this game, a game the way that they've designed it, they want it just to all be one type of thing, logs, and one type of thing, cars. But the key difference is you don't touch the sprites in this bottom bit, and you do touch the sprites in the top bit. It's a lot similar to what is a, a more modern game like Crossy Roads, and that might be something you're more familiar with. 
but uh, that's that's what they're going for here. All right, and so let's see what it is that we get points for. When the green flag is clicked, the required ones, as they said, are these negative one point ones. What are, what are the required ones? Background including visual requirements appears. Frog appears on first platform. Time is set to 30. Lives is set to three. Frog appears at the bottom of the screen. Frog moves right and left with the arrow keys. Great. So that's the required bits to begin with. Uh, and then there's two bonus points. One is that cars move into view from the left and right sides of the screen, and the logs move into view from left and right sides of the screens. Now the frog behavior. F frog moves left and right with arrow keys. Frog jumps forward slash backward with up and down keys. And we get bonus points for when the frog jumps forward and backward. There's an animation. Uh, when the frog returns to the first platform, which is his starting position, if he's hit by a car, uh, the lives decreasing, which you would expect. And even more points if the frog, when he's hit by a car, does an ouch animation. When the frog lands on a log, he moves with it as if sitting on top of it. When the frog lands in water, he returns to the second platform. When the frog lands in water, lives decrease by one. If the frog lands in water, a splash sound plays. When the frog jumps into the landing platform, all sprites hide and a U-win background is displayed. When timer lives reaches zero, all sprites hide and a U-lose background is displayed. Extra features. You want to explain those? I don't know if we'll get to all of these, but uh, we can explain them. At the beginning of a game, the choose your character screen appears in which you can choose what your frog looks like. Before the game starts, a three, two, one, go countdown displays. Game includes a working pause slash play button. When the game ends, a working play again button appears. When the game ends, level two starts, which has double the number of rows, uh, r number of rows of cars slash logs. When the game ends, a high score list which keeps track of the th top three fastest times and the usernames of players is displayed. Yeah, and like I said, I don't know that we'll get to all of those, but uh, we'll do some of them for sure. So let's go ahead and uh, start putting together some of the required features here. Uh, I've already created a project called Frogger Competition on si inside my account, but it's got nothing in it yet. And we're going to probably want to be able to look back at this little screen here to get some sense of what's going on. Now, if you look at this image, um, what you'll see is there's actually a bit of a grid going on here. The frog, when he jumps, he has to jump up into specific rows. He can't be in between. He'll always be in that particular lane, whether that's one of these safety lanes, whether it's a car lane or whether it's a log lane. And the same is true going left to right. So there's like there's a little bit of a buffer that we have on the margins here where he's not going to be able to get in there at all. But beyond that, it, we're going to have a regular grid here. And if I understand this right, it looks like we have one column right here followed by two columns where he can't go in, followed by one column where he can and two and so forth. So if, if I've got this right, what we have is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen columns going across. And up and down, if we take out this space here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen rows. Once again. Okay? So let's try and do it that way. Um, I think uh, what we might actually do uh, is just to make it a little easier, we'll cut it down to, four. They, they said we could, we could get away with having only two rows of logs and two rows of cars. I think maybe we'll cut it down to four of each. So that would be 13 columns and, um, uh, yes, 13 columns and 11 rows. And one of the reasons for doing that is that um, in our scratch window, it's not square like this, it's actually a rectangle. So we have more room for columns than we do for rows. So let's let's start. They, there were some required things which we needed to do. One is that we ha needed to have a sprite called frog. So here's our sprite called frog. We needed uh, another sprite called car. And let's go ahead. I have some images, some clip art images of cars ready. So let's go ahead and pick uh, a orange car to start with. 
and I believe it told us that we had to name this cars, didn't we? Cars, yes. So let's go ahead and name it cars. And we needed one called logs as well. Um, and as you know, if you noticed on that game, um, that game screen there, that the logs were actually of two types. They were either turtles or logs, and I've got the turtles here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a turtles for my logs. All right, so those are the three, oh, the three required sprites. Let's switch up the costumes here. I do have some costumes for the frog, and I've got it where it can be uh, animated. So let's go ahead and bring in each one of those. And then we'll get rid of our old scratch cat friend. And as you can see that this frog, it looks like he's kind of mid-range on a jump, which is kind of cool. So we've got our frog, we've got our cars, I've got our logs. There were a couple of variables that they required for us. One of them was lives. Is that right? Do you remember what yes. the other one was? Uh, lives and time. Time, that's right. So let's make time for all sprites. And let's make another one called lives. Okay. And now these are too big, and we're going to have to deal with that. Uh, but we'll, we'll take care of that as we get going. Uh, the background is something we need to work on as well. Uh, if, if you recall, it was pretty black. Uh, so let's go ahead, we'll convert this to a vector, and then let's just get a big black box in here. And we'll make sure we fill it in with black, just like that. And there was some text at the bottom. Uh, I think we will keep track of our time and our lives as variables, so let's go make those large. And we'll put uh, lives over here. And we'll put time over here. And then we need to let the user know what's going on with these, these little variables. So we're going to have to put some text in there to tell them what those are. So something other than black, of course, you want to make it uh, kind of bright, uh, maybe greenish. Yeah, that would look. Yeah. And, but this is going to have to be text. And this will be lives, which we can move. And it's hard to tell because we can't see quite where that shows up on the right but we can see it on the left so lives is there and we're going to need another one for time oh, time and we'll go take our arrow key and we'll move this down here and it looks like lives could go down a little bit and probably move this guy down a little bit too Okay, so that's a bit of the background. Now we do need to draw in uh, the little purple area. So we're going to need something that looks purple. Uh, maybe a little darker purple than that. And the question is whether we do that in the background or as a sprite, but I think we can just draw it in the background and change the size if we need to later. Uh, so we're going to need a rectangle for that. And we'll make that all the way across the screen. Oops. I keep moving it on accident. All the way across the screen. Probably a little thinner than that. Something maybe like that. And then we'll fill that in nice and purple. And we can still move that down. So it required that visual. There was another uh, purple band, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Right after the cars. And that was kind of towards the middle of where the cars would be. And we'll change the sizes of these if we need to. Then at the top there was this place where they could jump in. And um, uh, let's get to that a little bit later. Let's actually start doing some of the work that would be involved. So we need, we need our frog to show, but then these other two, let's just make them hide to begin with. And the best way for us to do that is actually in the code itself. So let's jump right into the scripts. And on the stage, I tend to put the, when the green flag is 
clicked into the stage and I immediately do a broadcast and wait which is to initialize all the variables. And I tend to initialize the variables for that are common to everyone, to all the sprites right inside of the stage itself. And there are two variables we need to set to begin with, right? Lives and time. And what did it say lives should be to begin? I don't know. Alright, so let's look. Lives is set to 3. And time is set to 3rd. Okay. So we must set that to 3. And we must set time to 30. All right. Now, the other thing that we probably want to do after we initialize all the variables is set up for the first level. So let's make another event for that. And in this case, uh, the these guys are going to have to start to respond to that. So for now, we don't want when the green flag is clicked. What we want is when when we are setting up for the first level, we're just going to hide because we don't need to show right now. We'll, we'll do more with this later. But for now, let's just make sure everybody is kind of out of the way. So set up for first level, hide. And the frog, I'll let him, I'll let him sit for now, but I will put the event in. But we'll work on the frog first in, our, in the next um, episode that we do for this particular game. Let's go ahead and click play on that. That means that everybody's gone away except for our wonderful little frog. And we're in a good place to get started. We've got our lives showing, we've got our time showing, we understand what it is that we're supposed to do in the competition. And our frog, while not in the right spot, we do have the right costumes for him. Um, I think what we'll, we'll do one more thing while I have a little bit of time here. And we just have a few more minutes. I'll just add the rest of the car costumes because I found a few of them. So we have an orange car, we have a red car, we have a blue car, and we have a truck. And they're all facing to the right. But now we have uh, different cars that we can pull from as costumes as they go across the screen. All right, well, this is a good start. We understand what it is we need to do. We've got the background ready, so we've already taken care of some of our negative points. There is a visual, there is a frog. Uh, he doesn't move around yet, so we have many more negative points to go, but we've got a good start. Uh, I hope you uh, are able to follow along with us and make a project of your own and to try out different things, and I hope you do enjoy what we put together here. For now, we're going to sign out, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye! -bye. Bye.